Seattle, you can drive 20 minutes in any direction and be in like a completely different vibe. You can drive 45 minutes to an hour and you can be in the mountains. I'm trying to find this one spot. They keep on moving and it's called Saigon Market. It's a crazy little um, Vietnamese joint. When I was like a stoner, I would go in there and I would just have like, just because it's not much money. So you just buy like a bunch of gooey like dessert treats and you're like, I don't even, I didn't even know what that was, like a purple yam dessert. But um, fresh rolls, always fire. I didn't even check to see if this is the one with pork, <laughs> but it's fire. I think this place is like one of the best kept secrets in Seattle because it's super authentic. But then on top of that, it's like, it's good, cheap, you know, like if you're on like a budget and you just want a snack and you're trying to get like some authentic shit, you don't get like good Vietnamese food all over the country. How do you think you say that? I think it's Zhuang, but maybe it's Duong. You never know. Cause like I went to high school and middle school with like a thousand new yens. This is Washington middle school. Um, I got beat up a couple times around here, but I went to middle school so long ago that I remembered the other day that I had this English teacher named Miss McClellan. She's definitely dead because she would smoke in her classroom during lunch. She would blast cigs in her classroom during lunch, which is pretty fucking wild if you consider what parents are like now. <laughs> like if a parent found out your teacher smoked, they might even like try to get you fired for just being a smoker. One time this lady, this is like a true story that happened in Seattle. There was like a diptych, like two pictures next to each other. They were like gelatin Andy Warhol prints. So they're like a soft medium. And this woman was drunk at an event at the Seattle Art Museum and she had to adjust her heel and she put her hand through the Andy Warhol. And so now there's only one. So if you see that picture in the art museum of Elvis like this, there used to be two, but a woman just and I don't even think they charged her because it's like, you can't charge like a regular, you can't be like, oh, you owe us $40 million. You can still sue, right? Yeah, but what, like, just ruin somebody's life because she was drunk? So this right here, the Flatstick Pub, downstairs of this place used to be um, the Comedy Underground, the first Comedy Underground that I ever went to. And then it moved around the corner. That room was so, fucking perfect. It was like the comedy cellar. You walk down this thin stairwell with headshots of comics from, you know, the history of comedy. Like everybody had played there. Cause when comedy became like a traveling road thing, like you go into a weekend here, you go into a weekend there. Like this was one of the first clubs. Like Seinfeld, when he goes and plays the Paramount, this is when it was still open. He used to go and visit every time he came to Seattle, he would go there. He wouldn't even necessarily do a set. He just like loved mm. the club so much. Um, but the guy who ran it was like a dirt bag and uh, he never like really gave a shit about the like art of comedy, I don't think. Cause he, I mean, he was nice to me. I shouldn't call him a dirt bag, but like when I started comedy there, like I swear to God, like at the open, my crackheads would show up. There was this guy named Mickey or Mikey, but he would go on stage and he was a crackhead and his girlfriend who was like mentally ill also would bring like a camcorder to film his set. She would sit in the front and he would always go over the light. And so they would have to turn the mic off, turn the lights off and like he'd, he'd keep going and then they'd play music and eventually he'd give up. But this one time I was there, he had a bag with him on stage. They cut the mic, they start playing music, they turn the lights off. Out of the bag, he pulls a bullhorn and he just keeps on doing his act. <laughs> interesting to see what happens with Seattle like long term because like there's no reason to be downtown. Actually if I lived in Seattle it would be a dope idea to just do a podcast where you ride the Seattle ferry with somebody. <laughs> the Bainbridge Ferry. Yeah. 
That would be cool. This is the bottom part of the Pike Place, which I feel like most people don't ever fuck with because up top is like where it's like teeming with like, you know, the fishmongers and the fruit sellers and the flower people. But it's actually got like five or six different layers of like levels and like that's where like all the old like cutty little like, there's like a magic shop, a comic book shop. There's like always like some weird like kind of ethnic store just selling like junk essentially. You don't know how they stay open. I'm sure it's like a front for like a heroin business. This is always where I come, where like I go into the Pike Place because it's just like, you can't even park up there. That's where like the fucking, you know, like just tourist hordes are. But if you come from down here, you can walk up the back way and you actually get to see the like little places before you get exhausted by the crowd. I gotta buy us some fruit sticks. They're so gross. They're like the grossest, cheapest. Nobody wants them. But let's put it that way, but I get them every time I come down here. See, this is like my favorite part of the market. It's like the oldest part. Like the least kind of like, I don't know, traveled or whatever. But there's like all these little weird stores. But like, look at this wood. Like that's gotta be 100 years old. This spot. Garbage, essentially, but cool garbage. I used to buy magic tricks there, and then I would like come and show them to like my parents, and I set my stepmom's blouse on fire because one had like a flash paper thing, and I wasn't allowed to do magic anymore. Kind of saved me though. If you think about it, it's like kind of a blessing in disguise because imagine an, an adult magician. Like, there's no win. There's like three magicians in the world where you're like, that guy's cool. <laughs> Gum wall. Shit's disgusting. I think that you could probably find a lot of diseases in the gum wall. There's definitely like DNA from AIDS, Ebola, SARS, pig flu. Was there a pig flu? No, that's that was one. Okay. <laughs> when I was a kid, I would come down here and we would just walk around eating samples because we didn't want to like buy food. Let's see, do they not have the shitty fruit rolls anymore? Hey, do you guys not do the fruit rolls anymore? Alright, thanks man. Nobody's doing them anymore. No, not not in the market anyway. Weird. Okay. Probably for the better of humanity. This is the spot everybody everybody comes to Seattle. They, they come and see this. Seattle's very depressing. It makes you depressed. I think one problem with that depression is everybody's kind of got the seasonal affective disorder. So there's not really like a urgency to get better. You'd think you'd live a little more carefree. You'd be like, hey, there's a fucking volcano over there. We're gonna, you know, possibly die. But instead people are like, I'm gonna sit home and kind of think about a book I wanna write. <laughs> <laughs> That's my buddy Zach's house right down there on that corner right there. He's got a pool in his backyard But <laughs> the best thing about Zach was uh, he wasn't the, the, the brightest bulb He's not like a stupid person, but he did some dumb stuff And I remember when we were in high school first time smoking pot and he got caught smoking pot by his parents because he was smoking pot With a cardboard box over his head like he thought that that was <laughs> So he had like a giant cardboard box and his mom comes in the room and there's just smoke billowing out from under this cardboard box to my friend's head. Why are you learning Ukrainian? Because I'm, don't, you can't share this. It's <laughs> very secret. I'm like, here's another uh, little secret thing that you guys, this is like locals only know this. There's this park, which is, it's not, it's called bi-cracking, this park. And it's, I think, a better view sometimes. 